Hi, welcome back. Certainly glad you could join us today. I thought today we'd just do a fantastic little painting. I hope you have your paint set up and you're all ready to join us. So I'll tell you what, let's start out and have them run all the colors across the screen that you need to paint along with me. While they're doing that, let me show you what I've got done. Got my standard old pre-stretched canvas up here, and, and it's been covered with a thin, even coat of the liquid white, so it's all ready to go. So I'll tell you what, let's go. Today, let's just have some fun. Let's just do a little, little painting that'll sort of make you happy. It's enjoyable. I want to start out with a little touch of the Thalo Blue on a two-inch brush. Don't need a great deal of paint. And let's, let's go right up in here today and just, let's just have some fun. Let's just do something like this. There. Sometimes it's fun just to, just to sort of let your imagination go crazy and just enjoy playing with color and just having a good time. A little phthalo blue, just phthalo blue. And it's mixing with the liquid white that's on the canvas. And automatically, automatically you get all this nice blending. Now then, tell you what, let's add a little bit of the Prussian blue. Now Prussian blue is much darker and much stronger. And I'm gonna go right around the edge with a little bit of the Prussian blue. Something like so. And we're still just using little crisscross strokes. Put some on the other side over here too. Don't want it left out. There. About like so. Okay. Well, that's looking pretty neat already. Now then, maybe I'll take a uh, I'll tell you what, let's use a little Prussian blue and I'll add a little of the a little of midnight black to it. We'll make a very dark blue, black and blue, or blue and black, whichever you prefer. All right, we'll come right up here. And we'll just put in a little of that very, very dark color. Okay. Now then, take that same color and go to the other side and put a little over here just like so. And we're still using little crisscross strokes. It really makes blending a lot easier if you use those little crisscross strokes rather than just drawing big circles like that. Okay, now, fun part. This is the fun part. We'll wash our brush. Shake off the excess. <laughs> and just beat the devil out of it. There we are. Let's take a little bit of the titanium white, right on the two inch brush. And I'm gonna move right back up in here and decide where the lightest part of the sky is. And we'll just begin blending outward. This is just straight titanium white. And this is to put a little bright spot in our sky. Just let it blend outward in here. And you can do this several times to achieve a desired lightness if you want to. There we are. And just keep blending outward. Mm. This is a nice way of making a very effective little sky. Okay, just keep working outward. But try not to take the dirty color from over here and put it back in the center. Stay out of the center once your brush is dirty. If you want to go back in the center and work, then I would suggest you clean the brush and start fresh. Just to really get in here and scrub it off. <laughs> Besides that, it's fun just to beat the brush a little bit. There we are. Okay, that's sort of a wild looking sky already. Okay, I'll tell you what let's do. Let's mix up a nice lavender. We'll use a little phthalo blue and a lizard crimson. Proportionally much, much more of the crimson than blue. I want this to be sort of to the reddish side. And it's hard to tell. Let's put a little white in there and see what we have. I want a nice light lavender color. Maybe we need a little more white. Oh, that's getting nice now. That's getting nice now and just mix it back and forth between the crimsons and blues and white till you get a color that you want. And I think something like that's about what we're looking for. Let me wipe off the old knife here. And we'll have a fan brush today. What the heck. Let's go right in here. Get a touch more of the crimson on there. Oh yeah, there. But load both sides full of color. Full of color. 
then let's go right up here and make some big decisions. Maybe in our world, there's some little things that live right in here. And we're just taking the, just taking the fan brush and sort of tapping downward. That's all we're doing basically here. See, just tap downward. Maybe we'll allow it to come right down in here somewhere, wherever, wherever. Okay, maybe it comes right on up. Just make some decisions. Look at your painting and decide where you think things should live and, and drop them in. There. Now maybe in there, there's a few trees that we can see a lot more detail on. We'll just use the corner of the brush and work it back and forth. There they are. There they are. They live right here in your brush. All you gotta do is just sort of shake them out. Just scare them out back and forth. We'll even make this one a big old tree. There. And we're just looking for some basic shapes. Just a few here and there. Shoot, I tell you what, that was so nice. Let's put some on the other side too. Maybe I'll have one over here. We'll have a big one right there. Corner of the brush. As you work down the little tree, push harder and harder so the bristles bend downward today. Sometimes we make them bend upward, sometimes downward. Just sort of depending on how you feel, what your mood is, or how the trees are where you live, or how the trees are in the area that you want to show in your painting. Just a few more of these little devils. Okay, give them a little friend there. Just a little one right there. Maybe another one. There. Wherever you think this should be. Okay. Maybe a little in there, wherever. Okay, now we'll grab the old two inch brush. Be sure it's dry. And I want to create the illusion of mist down at the base of this. So take the top corner of the brush and firmly tap. Just firmly tap. That's all we're doing there. There. And with that you can create the illusion of all kinds of little soft areas in there. Very soft and very misty. Just let that go right on over to this side. Just keep on misting. There. You can probably hear how loud I'm hitting or how hard I'm hitting. It's hard to hear how loud I'm hitting. And very lightly, we'll lift upward. Very gently. Very gently. Just barely, barely touching the canvas. Shoot, I tell you what, we have that old color going. I'm just going to add a little bit more to my brush. Maybe there's a nice tree. It lives right here. And I'm just using the top corner of the brush. and just want to create the indication of some nice little things that live back in here. See, they're almost the same color as the sky. I don't want them to be real distinct. I want them to be soft. Just little gentle things that live back here. Nice tree going there. A little bit darker down toward the base, so it shows up. But this is a way of creating several layers of little background trees and bushes and all that, just with a two inch brush, just with tapping. Okay. Maybe it comes right on down here. I don't know, wherever you want it wherever you think it should be. Maybe a little more. Okay. Now then, I'm going to take the old script liner brush, number two script liner brush, a little paint thinner on it, and we want to thin this paint till it's literally like ink or water, but very, very thin, very thin. Look at there. And then turn the bristles as you take them out. That'll bring it to a nice sharp point. There you can see how sharp that is. Maybe there's a few little sticks and twigs that you can see back here. Just a few, wherever you think they should be. There. These little devils are always back here in the trees and stuff. So just, just put in a few wherever you want them, wherever. Okay. 
few over here too. We don't want this side left out. Now then, tell you what, we'll just keep on using that same color. It's just basically lavender, lizard crimson, and phthalo blue. And we'll come right in here and begin just adding all kinds of little things. But look at all the different layers that we've created. That's what will help create that illusion of depth and distance in your painting. Just layer after layer after layer. Add a little of the midnight black to that. I want to get very dark down in here. All right. Okay. Now, just take that same old brush. I guess it's all right. We'll just go right into a little bit of the cad yellow, little yellow ochre. And all I'm doing is tapping with the, with the top bristles. You can see it very well there. That's a nice close up. See there? Just tap though with the top corner. All right. Now then, with that, we can come back in here and just using that top corner, you can begin shaping all kinds of little individual bushes and trees that live in here. There. And we can vary the colors back and forth between the, oh, yellow ochre, Indian yellow, bright red. Just vary them. Let them, let them just sort of work back and forth and change them to however it makes you happy. But do one little bush at a time. Don't get, don't get too greedy. <laughs> Sometimes it, it starts working well and you get, you get a little carried away and want to do 18 bushes at once. Just, just work on one at a time. Give each one of them a name if necessary. Whatever it takes. Just make them individuals. There. See, layer after layer after layer after layer. That really is what creates that illusion of depth. And I know you hear me say that over and over, but I think that's very important in a painting. There we go. And we might here maybe just some tiny little indications. Not much, not much. Not much back here. Just a few little things that hide back in there. Okay. And you take the knife, scrape through, make a few little sticks and twigs that look white because the canvas is showing through. There. All right. Now, shoot, I tell you what. Let's put a little barn in here today or a big building. Maybe, maybe it lives right in here. So take the knife and just scrape out a basic shape. Um, about like that. I don't know. Whatever you want. Maybe it's got an old shed on it even. By scraping out this basic shape, let me grab a little Van Dyke Brown. It will uh, do two things. It removes excess paint, which is most important. But the other thing it does is it allows you to sort of lay out your whole perspective and your whole building and everything without really being committed. There. Okay. So I say we said we'd have a little shed out here. So we'll just put a little roof, pull down, and all we're doing right now is just blocking in color. That's all we're doing, just blocking in color, like so. There. A little bit on this side. <laughs> Wished it was that easy to actually build a barn. This certainly makes it easier. My father was a carpenter, so I've spent a lot of my life building things. I know how difficult it is to, to actually make a barn. That's why I say I wished it was this easy to do. Now then I'm gonna take a little, let's take a little white, a little dark sienna, a little Van Dyke brown. We just mix them together like so. Maybe even the least little touch of blue into it and that'll gray it, that'll, that'll give it a gray tone. Pull across, get our little roll of paint right down the edge of the knife. Then we can come back in here and no pressure, no pressure. Whew. Just like putting snow on the mountains. Barely touch, barely, barely touch. Want to make this look like old weathered wood. Old weathered wood, like me, it's had a hard life. There we go. A little bit over in here. Shoo. See, just barely touch though, 
barely, barely touch. And we'll take a little more of the Van Dyke Brown and make it make it much darker because on the other side, not much light's going to hit. So you need you need to have that quite a bit darker. See, how, in comparison, how dark it is. But our little roll of paint still come right up in here. Decide where the roof line is. Just enough so it barely, barely shows up. That's all we're looking for. There would not be much light striking this side of the building. Not much light. There. And right along the edge here, maybe I'll put a nice distinct line so it shows that there's a, there's a difference there. Let's take a little bit more of the Van Dyke Brown, and I'm going to turn this into an old slab building, with, in other words, made with boards. And to do that, we'll just take the knife, a little bit of Van Dyke Brown on it, and create the illusion of a lot of little boards in here. Something like so. Now you can smooth that by taking a two inch brush and barely touching, barely. Whew. Just graze it. Whew. Now for a roof, what are we going to do? Let's just take midnight black on the roof. Midnight black, well, like that. Get our little roll of paint right on the edge of the knife again. And let's just let it bounce along here and play. Let's just touch it. Bloop, 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 bloop. Gotta make that little noise though. That's all there is to it. Just let it bounce. Let the knife touch. The canvas will pull off what it wants, and give you back what's left. There we are. That easy. Now we'll take a small edge on the other side, and I want to make an indication of little shingles showing on the other side. But by using a small edge, it'll be sort of jaggedy. There. It'll look like you're looking at the edge of little, little doers there. Okay, right here, excuse my arm a second. Make that line a little darker where they come together. There. Maybe we'll make a little doer there. Try to make it a little more distinct. Now we need a door in there. This is an old barn, gotta have a place for the cow to go. We just take a knife and go. How's that instant door? We'll take a small edge, go up here, put a little, little place for the hay to go up. Cut around there. There we are. Shoot, we got a pretty good looking old barn there. What the heck? Let's just keep going here. We'll use that lavender and black and a little brown here and there. Maybe. Maybe. Yeah, right there. And I'm still just using the top corner of the brush. Maybe I'll put just a little tree right there. Something like so. All right. Comes right on down. I don't know, wherever you want it. Something like so. Maybe it comes right in front of the barn. We go to all that work to build a barn, then we'll tear it up. But that's all right. That's all right. Now we have several layers of color here. There. Yeah, grab a, I got a bunch of brushes going here, so I'll grab another one. We'll take a little bit of sap green, a little yellow, yellow ochre. Just tap a little color right onto the bristles. A little bit of red. There we are. Let's go right up here. Now we can just begin adding on some little highlights on some of these. Mm. Did you ever think you could just take a top of a great big old brush and make all these beautiful little trees? You really can. You can. a little red and yellow right here, make a nice orange color. Put some color in this rascal. You know, in some of the past shows in this series especially, I've, I've enjoyed showing you some of my little creatures. I want to show you one more <laughs> today. We got just a second. I'm just going to be doing this while you're watching. But this is one of my little squirrels. And they bring so much pleasure into my life. My mother and I enjoy these. She plays with them too. She, she probably wouldn't admit that. But she has about as much fun with them as I do. And they love to get in your pocket and hide. And that's where, if you'd let them, they'd spend most of their time. It's just hiding right there in your pocket. So we call them pocket squirrels. 
Aren't those cute little devils, though? These are just babies. They're just beginning to get fur from, from their baby fuzz. There. Ah, then. See, he had to hide his head there a little bit. Probably fell asleep. But sometimes they stay in my little pocket there all day. And I just walk around the house, forget they're in there, and they go to sleep and take life easy. And they they really are a lot of fun. There we go. Hope you enjoy seeing them. Just taking a little titanium white here on the old liner brush and putting in a little tree trunk or two. And then let's find a knife. We'll take a little bit more of the Van Dyke brown. Let's come right along in here and let's put some put some dirt under here. There. Looks looks like the weeds have grown up and just about covered up the old barn. Touch a highlight on there. Don't want, don't want a great deal. Just a touch. I tell you what. Maybe let's do this. Maybe. Maybe there was a big old ditch right there. Big old ditch. Or ravine or whatever you want to call it. There. Just using Van Dyke Brown. Allow a little bit of that color that you put on the top to grab the knife and come down. You don't need much color here. Very, very little color. All right. Now then, let's go back to our brush. It's got the highlight color on it. The little greens and all that. Let's just come right in here and begin putting in shapes of all kind of bushes and stuff. Bushes, there they are. But just using the top corner, that's all we need. Okay, I'm gonna go back to my brush that has the dark color on it. We'll just put a few bushes here on this side of that ditch or ravine or whatever you wanna call it. Put a little dark color in there so the, the highlights will show. You know what? We gotta have a way to get in there, don't we? <laughs> Let's take some brown. Maybe there's a little path that comes right across here. Maybe it goes back in the woods somewhere. There. We just use some brown and lay it in. Like so. I'll take a little brown and white, a stark sienna and white, a little touch of yellow ochre in it. to walk. Goes right on back here. Okay, we'll have some little bushes that live right down in here and come right up over the top of that a little bit. A little bright red, Indian yellow. Look at there. I like little paintings like this because it teaches you to use just one big brush. Basically, the only brush we've used here is a great big old two inch brush. And, 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 a little bit of dark color right here. Push this side back. Some highlights on him. Doop, doop, doop. A little bit of red. I want that to stand. Ooh, that's nice. Some growing right here in front of the old path. We'd have to have, we was going across this ravine here. We'd need we would need to have maybe something up here to keep everybody from falling off. So we'll put a little doer like that. A few little highlights on it, some brown and white. Come back. Let's have a little rail across here. See, because I'd fall off in there. There we go. A little something for you to hold on to when you go by. And our little bushes that are growing right here. Scratch in a few sticks and twigs, all those little things. Now, let's have some fun. We've got a second left here. I'm going to take Van Dyke Brown on the fan brush. A little dark sienna, too. What the heck? Just mix them right up in there. Right up. Maybe we have, yep, you know me. Big tree lives right there. He's got a friend right there. Like so. Just make it nice and dark. Take our liner brush. Mix some a little bit of Van Dyke Brown with paint thinner until it's very thin, like ink. Okay, let's go up here. Maybe 
Mm, let it wiggle and jiggle. Got to make those little noises. And we put in a few little limbs on these trees. In the back, you can see a few little trees that are living in there. But just some nice hanging down branches on here. There. The other old tree needs some too. There we go. But the paint should be very thin. If you have trouble making it flow, then just add a little paint thinner to it. And we're going to put a few leaves on here so we're not too worried about it. Okay, grab another little fan brush. I have several of them going. We'll take some of that black and brown mixed together. And right in here, in our world, maybe there's some... There we are. Just a few little things that live out here on this tree. Like so. Just push upward with a brush. It'll create that illusion of all kind of little leaves and stuff out here. There. Wherever you think this should be. It's exactly where they should be. All right. I'm going to take, without even cleaning the brush, a little touch of yellow ochre on there. And it'll mix with that and turn sort of greenish. And just push up a little highlight on these. Doesn't take much. I want it to stay quite dark. Well, the old clock on the wall tells me it's about time to call it a day. I really hope you've enjoyed this one. It's a very nice little painting. It'll show you how to use a limited number of pieces of equipment and make a super painting of yourself. From all of us, happy painting, and God bless, my friend.